you can now 3D print with chocolate. And I mean, you could 3D print with chocolate now, thanks to the Cocoa Press 3D printer. Hey everybody, it's Joe the 3D Printing Professor. And if you're new to 3D printing or just want something new to do with 3D printing, you're in the right place. And I hope that you'll stick around for a little while. I've got social links in the description. And if you want, you can come join me on Discord where I've got a great community of people who enjoy talking about 3D printing and helping other people do amazing things with 3D printing, including showing off their 3D prints and troubleshooting. So I hope you'll consider joining me there. I recently got back from the Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival in Loveland, Colorado, which was a wonderful trip. And if you haven't been watching your feed and checking out my shorts on the subject, I've been releasing a lot of short videos about the cool things that I saw at the Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival. They were mostly things like this. What are some of the coolest projects at the Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival? Bot Rumble. Full color lithophanes by my friend, pattern to print, Jason right here, 3dpt.club. This mad lad, crayons, clay, concrete, cookie CAD, beautiful filaments, CAD program, utility research lab, multi-point touch sensing using spent coffee grounds to make 3D prints, bio fiber, lulz bot, amazing toys that you 3D print, print a bloke, voronkits.com, brusa. Yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. But I did spend some extra time talking to Ellie Rose, the creator of the Coco Press 3D printer, a 3D printer kit that you can buy that you can put together so that you can 3D print with chocolate yourself. Now, I want to share with you the conversation that we had. And then afterwards, let's talk a little bit more about what I think about what this 3D printer means for the future, not only of 3D printing in general, but 3D printing chocolate specifically. Give me the pitch. Tell me about Coco Press. Okay, so Coco Press is a 3D chocolate printer. Um, so you, it lets you print personalized designs and lets you create textures that are just not possible to make with traditional chocolate making. So that that well, uh, the ability to 3D print it takes what the benefits are of 3D printing for uh, other industries and it brings it into the food space and brings it into the chocolate space. Now, I first saw you playing with this uh, 3D printer at Earth 2019. Yeah. So, what, what were you, did you initially start with the idea of, I want to make a product to sell to other people? Or did you just say, I wanted to make chocolate 3D prints? Well, what was your impetus here? I was a senior in high school when I started this project in an intro to engineering class. And I was kind of like naive enough to think that I could build anything. Yeah. Um, and so, let's see. I propose I want to build a 3D printer. And my teacher pointed to a 3D printer. I was, I was fortunate enough to go to a high school in 2014 that had 3D printers and said, we already have 3D printers. Can you build something that we don't already have? So I, I said, okay, came back with, how can I get the school to buy chocolate for me? Yeah. No, nobody was doing it at that point, and I thought it would be an easy material to work with because it heats up at body temperature, it cools down at room temperature. Uh, and I've kind of taken the last eight years to realize that chocolate's a really hard material to 3D print. Right, yeah, no, and, and you've done a fantastic job with it. So besides the challenge of figuring out the extrusion mm -hmm. of 3D, 3D printing chocolate and moving it around and stuff like that, uh, what's, what's been your biggest aha moment in making this that, that you actually thought, oh, this could be a thing? It was never intended to be a business. It was, a, it was supposed to be a six month project for a school class. Um, and then I took it to the New York Maker Fair in 2017. And people said, how much does it cost? How many are there? How can I buy one? How many have you made? I run a chocolate shop. I do wedding planning. It's like, oh, wait, hold on. Like, I finished this new prototype three days ago, you know? So that, that's when it started saying, wait, th there actually might be a business case for this here. Um, now, are you thinking about this from the standpoint of you doing 3D prints commission for other people? Or are you thinking about this from the standpoint of selling them a 3D printer that they could use? 
I have been selling chocolate for the past couple of years while working on it. It's a great way to get paid to do your R&D work. Um, but I'm really excited to be selling the hardware now. Uh, Pre-orders just opened up for the new printer this past week and hopefully we'll be shipping them this fall. If I wanted to 3D print chocolate and I got the cocoa press, yeah. like what slicer do you use? What's the tool chain? How hard is it? What, what's gonna be my biggest gotcha moment in figuring yeah. this out? It's gotten to the point where it's pretty simple. I mean, there's still a little bit of a learning curve from plastic 3D printing. Um, it's a Vaughn style kit. So print your own parts, uh, about a 10 hour assembly. And, but you don't have to know any electronics. We'll have all the wiring pre-done and everything. And then in terms of slicers, Prusa slicer is what we're using. And you know, take standard STL, standard G code. You just have to figure out a little more of what types of overhangs can you do, what types of stuff. But we can do overhangs and uh, we can do print in place gears and articulating models. So well, and getting to really eat your cool. supports must be a pretty big plus. You can plus. eat your supports. So you just take a hot knife, you cut it, and uh, how big's the nozzle? 0.8 millimeter nozzle. So pretty standard, pretty yeah. common for and I 3D use about printing. 0.5 millimeter layer height generally. It actually melts into itself a little more than a plastic print would. Mm. Um, and so it doesn't look like I'm using that tall layer height. It's because the, pla uh, the chocolate melts into itself more than it, the It hides its own layers a bit like it does. silk filament it does. does. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. So where can people find out more about this? CocoaPress.com. You know, this isn't the first time that somebody has 3D printed with chocolate. It has been done before, but this is, to my knowledge, the first time that somebody has provided a kit that anybody could take and use and do 3D printing in chocolate themselves. And I feel like this kit could also be extended, modified, to print with all sorts of paste-like substances even ones that need a little bit of heat. So I think there's going to be a lot of cool applications for this. As Ellie pointed out, people could use this to make cake toppers. Heck, this could be an entire cottage industry unto themselves. But the cool thing about it is that, well, shipping chocolate all over the place, it could get messy. But if she's providing the 3D printers for people, well, then they could just do it locally for themselves. And I think that this is really the strength and power of 3D printing. And I commend Ellie for just going out of her way to make this kit so that this can extend and be out there in the world. I'm pretty excited about it. You know, the Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival was a great time. I saw a lot of great things, met a lot of great people, but every time I travel, it's just such a headache. You know when you go through an airport, nowadays they make you take off your shoes, and it's not because anybody actually did anything, but because a security expert thought, you know, if I were going to do something bad, this is how I would do it, and they thought of a way to do it through shoes, and so now all of us have to take off our shoes as we go through the airport. That's called getting ahead of the bad guys, thinking of what they might do and then preventing them from doing it. An exter is doing the same thing with their card holders. Their card holders encase your cards in practically a Faraday cage so that no electromagnetic radiation can get in or out and they even supply additional protection for the cards that might be sitting on the outside. This is because a lot of credit cards these days have a proximity touch sensor so that you can check out easily. But a industrious bad guy could really easily come up with a way to read your credit cards with some sort of near field device, but not if you've got them in an extra card holder. They protect you. And even though really maybe nobody's ever done this before, Exter is ahead of the game, keeping ahead of the bad guys with their card holders. I hope that you'll check out Exter. There will be links wherever links are found. And if you use the code 3D on checkout, you'll get a discount. Well, thank you very much for watching. And I want to remind you as always, you are a child of God, so you're special to me. So take care of yourself. And if you can, somebody else too. And hey, Maybe my travels to another Rep Rap Festival or Maker Fair in the future will bring us together so that we can see face to face. But until then, just remember, I love you, I care about you, and I'll see you next time.